Jolene Turner doesn't get a lot of sleep these days, haunted by what she sees when she closes her eyes. Every night when I go to bed, it plays over and over again like a movie. So I'll stay up at three days at a time just to avoid it. A daughter lost. She just wasn't there. And what the mother found. Jolene said it felt like someone had punched her in the gut. What really took place the night Samantha Folsom suddenly disappeared and why the horror that happened after. It split her parents apart. I didn't want to leave her. It's like a carnival ride that never stops. All I want is I want it to stop. Remember the beginning. It was the first picture taken of her as a baby. From the day their daughter was born, Samantha Turner's parents were the very epitome of proud. She was a really good daughter. She loved to go out with us, even though we were old to her. And it was like being with a friend versus you got to come out with us. We're your parents, we say so. We had some really good times. Yeah, we did. But it wasn't just that she was fun to be around. John and Jolene say it was also the choices their daughter made, the kind that build character. She was a wonderful child. We never in any type of trouble whatsoever. She was also a protector of sort of the underdog. Both a champion and a cheerleader, Samantha's parents say she could have been anything, but that sometime after high school, their daughter got off track. And they say it started around the time she met a man named Jesse Folsom, a man Samantha's mom had a hard time welcoming into their lives. It's just what you call a mother's instinct. I knew that he was not right for her. And she says mother's instinct became intuition confirmed when she started noticing dark bruises on her daughter's arms. I asked her one day, why are you wearing long sleeves in the middle of summer? And I lifted up her shirt and found the marks. She suspected the marks were coming from Jesse. And Jolene says when she confronted them both about the alleged abuse, neither denied it. But Sam's family also says that after a lot of work and time, things actually seem to improve. I did the best I could with Jesse. I worked three, four nights a week getting him his GED. And then John helped Jesse start a career in the Army. And they were going to start a new life. And I had his word at the time that he was going to protect her. And with that promise in place, Jesse and Samantha decided to make a few more, like to have and to hold and till death do us part. They got married and moved to California. Her husband was stationed in the army. But after that, Samantha's parents say it was more than just her last name that changed. When they came back to visit or, you know, you could see there was a difference. She wasn't the same person. She was tired and she was introverted. Samantha's mom suspected drugs, and once again, her instincts were dead on. Samantha eventually confesses that she developed an addiction in California, and that even though she tried to shake it, she just couldn't. She didn't want to tell me because she didn't want to disappoint us. Then during another visit home, a revelation that would force Samantha to fight her demons harder than ever. Samantha is suddenly hit by a severe pain in her side. Her mom fears appendicitis and rushes her to the emergency room where doctors do an ultrasound of her abdomen. When they did the ultrasound, she found out she was pregnant. It was a surprise, but a happy one. And several months later, she gave birth to a perfectly healthy baby boy. Her parents say she was determined to keep it that way. After years of alleged dysfunction, Sam and Jesse split up. She moved back to Maine, got her own apartment close to her parents' place, and decided to make one more very big change. She wanted to go to rehab. She decided she wanted to change for her son. And that was the turning point in her life. Her son was staying with another family member when she told her parents she was ready to get help. She was going to come to our house, and she, we were going to take her to the rehab the next morning. Well, the next day, when she uh, just wasn't there, 6 o'clock came, 7 o'clock, nothing. 
The Turners made several calls to their daughter, each one more frantic than the last, but all went unanswered. And when they knocked on her apartment door, that went unanswered too. I went to the housing place and I asked them to let me in because I wanted to do a welfare check. And they said, no, you're not on the lease. After that, Samantha's parents filed a missing persons report. But they say there was little done. And for the next three days, they went back and forth between police and Samantha's apartment manager trying to get someone to listen. Finally, I, I went to the housing place again. And I said, look, she got a cat in there that hasn't ate in days. So they worked with me. They sent a maintenance man out and he opened it up. Right away, they say everything felt wrong. It was November. All the, sh the fans were on, windows were open, television was full blast. When I first walked in, my focus was more or less finding the cat, and I knew the cat carrier was in the closet. I uh, went outside because it was, you know, it was just, it was kind of musty. And I, she yells, John, quick, come here. And she opened the closet door, and that's where, that's where our life changed. Coming up. After that, it, the whole whole thing went to hell. Just the bottom dropped off. A life-altering discovery, what the parents found in that closet. It threw me back six feet against the wall. And so I opened the closet door where the cat carrier was, and there she was. There she was. Sorry.